request. No more on Vishnu, but I Krishna bestay, but relation, but if Hakti were on the swam at Namani. Namaste, Sadisati Devi, Kauravani, Pachalini, never cease in your hardy, Vashta Tadis Satalini. Jai Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nithananda Shri Advait Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ulam Hare Ulam 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 Hare Hare Okay, my brother. Sound guys, make sure they do it. My brother here as well now. She has a copy of the book. So um yeah, just picking up where we left off in our last reading. It was a couple of weeks ago perhaps longer, um, chapter 36, 36, which is the perfection of separation. So when we speak about perfection, we can only conclude that it's going to speak about the residence of Vandavan, and specifically speaking about the gopis <clears throat> and their feelings of separation from Krishna. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. Specifically, it's... Um, Focused the last we was reading focused on the um Krishna playing his flute and the gopis that went to meet Krishna and the gopis which couldn't meet Krishna. There were some obstacles in their path. Yeah. And they then Krishna man in their trance of smaram, Krishna manifest to them. Hare Krishna Bhavanita Mata. That they manifest to them, and the reason why there was obstacles because there is some shadow of impurity still there in the intense meditation of Krishna. Krishna manifest within their trance, and then all impurities were gone after that. Yeah, so that's quite um, esoterical what we're reading about, but quite interesting as well. So that's where we left off. So, Mother Chandravali, you have the book there. Um, no, I don't. I'm in Leicester. All right, yeah, Leicester. Okay. Where? Where? Where Mother. in Leicester? On Melton Road. I'm in Leicester too. <laughs> wow. Leicester, I live. Okay. Okay. And I'm in London. <laughs> okay, we're on page 730. What am I saying it for? 732. No one's got the book, so it looks like it's going to be me doing a reading. So that's where we left off. That's the context of where we left off. And Maharaj is making some correlations. Was always speaking about perfection, um, the gopis' feelings of separation, the gopis' meetings of Krishna, etc. Maharaj is giving co correlation for us as sadhakas of what we can learn from this. So it's very interesting. All right. So without further ado, I start reading. And please stop me if something's not and something you know, I stop throughout when reading and bring up things. But if if we hear something that we don't understand, then please feel free to stop and ask questions. Okay. Um Okay, I'll just back up one paragraph. Um, in the way that an expansive forest fire burns all things before it, the agony of the gopis' separation, so that's those gopis who couldn't meet Krishna, um, consumed all materially inauspicious things within their forms and consciousness. Thus the gopis became free of material contamination and in the purified state, yeah, in that purified state they met Krishna in their trance of separation. Yeah. So Krishna fully manifest himself within their meditation. From this incident, so what can we infer from it? From this incident, a sadhaka. That's us, we're practitioners. We can infer, can infer that we can be free of material contamination in proportion to the intensity of what comes next. Our surrender. 
No, more, yes, but specifically in the context of what we're speaking about, the Dagopis were feeling what? Separation. 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 Yes. Yeah. So to that degree, we feel the intensity of separation. To that degree, like the gopis, we can become pure. Like those gopis, we become purified. Yeah. Moreover, as the material aspect of his being, sadhakas, is consumed, which means it disappears, okay, the spiritual aspect is correspondingly manifest. So we develop a we dissolve, sometimes it's described that we dissolve the subtle body and we develop a spiritual body. So that means a spiritual body means you still got the same, you still got the same eyes, same nose. But your um your emotions, your internal development is fully attuned to Krishna. Yeah, what, 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 yeah. that's, that's the spirit and that's happening now to one degree or another okay can i jump in quick and ask something please yes but for that we we need knowledge and we need realization so we can purify from separation yeah we need yeah we need knowledge and that's what is our duty as a sadhaka is develop Every day again, yeah. Sambanda and Payojangan again. So that's our duty as sadhakas is to develop knowledge. Yeah. And that will assist us and that will propel us forward. Yeah. Is that okay, Mother Mongol? So I'm just agreeing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just I don't know how to put questions. I was just sorry, I was just thinking like yeah. if we don't have the knowledge then it's difficult to be on the aeroplane. But I think yeah, the more we have it, yeah. then it will help us to purify. Yeah, and that's why our chariots have given us not just the Maha Mantra. You know, you could in one sense, you could say Prabhupada could have just given them Maha Mantra. And the Goswamis could have just said chant the Maha Mantra. But they wrote so much, you know, Prabhupada wrote so many books. The Goswamis wrote so many books, yeah to assist us, yeah, to give us the required knowledge for which we can become purified and advanced. So continuing here, a practitioner's body has dual has a dual constitution. So that's us, we're practitioners, that is similar to the spiritual come material body of the gopis. Right? The adjective gunamayam indicates that prior to hearing the flute, the gopis' bodies were twofold, spiritual bodies materially tainted. So they hadn't, I guess we can, have, uh, we can conclude that they haven't heard the flute up to when they was on that night of the Sharat Purnima. Then they heard the flute. No. So, but when they heard the flute and felt its effects, their bodies became fully spiritual. Similarly, a, sadhus, a sadhaka's body is also twofold, a material body that is spiritualized. And by the strength of Nam Sang, Nam Sankitan, in separation, yeah, Nam Sankitan, in the mood of chanting Nam, in the mood of being separated from Krishna, a sadhaka's body gradually becomes increasingly spiritual. Okay. So there's a mood behind the mantra. Yeah. And and as we've been repeating again and again, this is what this part of Sankhava Kamudi is teaching us. Yeah. It's called yeah the, 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 the mood that goes behind the practice as a sadhaka, there's a certain mood that's behind their practice and that Mood is separation. Yeah. This true identity, so continuing to read, please, anyone, any questions or comments, please feel free. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask, not really ask, but thought, uh, thought about it like a week or so ago. Like, mm. uh, you know, you're chanting, you, you're trying to do what you're supposed to be doing 
when you're chanting, right? You can kind of hear them, mantra, peaceful, yeah. or, you know, um, trying to feel, uh, not feel, but the pastimes come. Uh, yeah. You also are like uh, meditating on yeah. on Krishna's pastime. Then you do then get, I was like feeling, there's more to this, more to this, but I couldn't, I couldn't, Pinpoint exactly. what more I can do to make go go further. You know, I was yeah. just feeling. That. Does that? I mean, can you explain that to me a little bit? Yeah, I'm sure everyone can relate to that. So then, yeah. So then we just leave it down to Krishna's grace and Krishna's mercy. Yes. We do everything we can to be right. attentive and to be in the right mood, but ultimately. <laughs> It's down to Krishna's grace and Krishna's mercy. We just keep doing what we understand should be done. Right. Mm. So we just, we just, what can we do? We just depend upon Krishna. Can do anything here. I just yeah. was so like confused. What can I add? What can I do? I was trying to think everywhere. What can I, you know, how you could yeah. do, but it was nothing was coming to my head. Yeah, sometimes it's like that. I'm sure devotees here experience that where you're locked out. No matter yeah. what you try and do and what you try and remember, <laughs> you just cannot, for one reason or another, you just cannot have access, you know. And that may be for various reasons. Um, let's just say, obviously, one obvious reason, it may be offences, it may be, it might not be as well. Maybe just Krishna, who's trying to increase our attachment to him. Yeah, but also I'm thinking in the beginning as well, you know, that's why these discussions we're having, where all the devotees have been practicing for quite a number of years. But generally, this this, this mood of chanting with Ripper Lumber, for, for a beginner, it may not may not be so relevant. For a raw beginner, they're just trying to keep the mind still for a few seconds, <laughs> let alone meditate and think of the mood of separation. But they should be at some point become aware of it and cultivate that mood of separation. Yeah, so, yeah, my, thank you, Mother Chandra. I think we all experience that. So what to do? Just what we can do as well, depend on Krishna, but just... Um, turn you know turn that non-access or turn that inability into the mood of humility and with that mood of being defeated and helpless call out to krishna yeah krishna i'm trying everything but this this raging mind won't focus please you can guide me also there's prayers like that where the acharya is actually prayed to the holy name to reveal itself to reveal the stages, to reveal the next stages, to reveal. So you can also offer prayers to the Holy Name. You please reveal to me. You give me the ability, please you reveal to me the stages of spiritual development. You, know, you can also pray like that directly to the Holy Name. Yeah. It's okay. Can I yes, ask please, my Yeah. I uh, uh, Prabhu was thinking even this uh, helplessness it doesn't stay long <laughs> it comes and like even you feel it uh, It doesn't stay long and, and again it goes away and then again uh, you're somewhere and then again it comes so you need to have continuous helplessness isn't it Prabhu yeah Generally, um, because that's generally these type of this we can develop, we can develop this mood of helplessness. It's good. I mean, the idea is that we're always feeling in this mood, but as you say, it comes and goes. You know, but but specifically, why we're doing direct devotional acts, Shravan and Kirtan and Vishnu, for instance, chanting our rounds, mm -hmm. then we can try to develop. We can try and be aware of this. But then as we're going about our duties throughout the day and we're interacting with the world and everything that goes with it, we may not be so focused you know, in that mood. But as one develops, one will carry that 
see as one develops in their chanting that they will develop their mood in their chanting throughout the day. But otherwise, it's generally going to be when we're sitting down and doing our bhajan. You know? uh, no, I was just thinking it about... Be, it may be when we're engaged in devotional acts as well. It, yeah. Um, sorry, Prabhu, even when you're sitting down and chanting, even that, uh, okay, you are chanting all the 16 rounds in one go, even at that time, that helplessness doesn't stay all the time. Yeah. So, sometimes it moves. Yeah, sometimes it moves, yeah. So that's why it's good, <laughs> like, like, like now we're hearing about it, just to yeah. be reminded, just to be yeah. gently reminded of the mood. Yeah. So then when we sit down the chant, we can feel the helplessness and it will come, it will go. Yeah. Can I can I jump also quick in and say yeah. something or say something? Yes. I think that's why we need senior devotees, because by looking to them and by hear them, hear their voices and hear how they they read and they preach and they serve, that mood will gradually become bigger. Because we are so much, I talk about myself. I, I am very much like now you are very focused, but tomorrow you might not be focused. So that's because we are getting in the field from the devotees, pure devotees, and then we get out from the field. And when we think we can do it by ourselves, but that's like a game. We need to understand that we are not in charge and we can't do it by ourselves. Yeah. And I think the more we do it like that, the more we will feel it will expand and we will tap more in that mood and it will open even more and more, I think. Yeah, that's very... Uh, thank you, Mother Mongo. So the, he's speaking about the importance of Sadhu Sangha, so associating with devotees. Yeah, we can <clears> very much. Yeah, we're very much dependent upon the association with senior devotees to learn bhajan, to learn, the, yeah, to develop these moods. We can hear from them, etc. Mm -hmm. Yes. Also, afterwards, I I I realized it. Some I realized something. I felt that because I'm reading and I'm meditating on these pastimes and this and that, I think, oh, I'm good. I'm going. And then Krishna just bashes you, right? You yeah. have to milk. Uh, there's more to this than just that. Just not be complacent, right? You hear you meditating this, that, all right, but you need to. He pulls away, so then you have to make that more effort now and realize that you were getting a bit proud about what you have really felt or done or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's so in so no, yeah, so Krishna's helping us. <laughs> yes, I felt that. I felt that. So yeah, then I have to get back on track to do yeah. push more, push more. Yeah, and that's something devotee will experience throughout their spiritual life. You know, Krishna doesn't like his devotees become proud or or to be complacent. So therefore, Krishna seems unattainable at times for a devotee. And that makes us reflect and develop some humility and some helplessness. That's Krishna's grace. Yeah, because I felt like uh, I was, uh, oh, I'm so, I've got my room and I'm chanting all my rounds in the morning, more than my rounds. And I like, you know, you get a bit like proud. Yes, that's the word, you know. Yes. So yeah. then Krishna, oh, all right, that's not it, you know. You've got to get back on track, you know. Yeah, I think we're read. I was reading forward a bit, and um, where will I get this thing? I don't know. But now it brings up the case of Narada Muni, who um, Krishna appeared to him, mm. and said he will not be able to see me again in this lifetime because he still harbored, he had some shadow of attachment to mm. being in solitary places, so he yeah. had. To Still had yeah. to go pure, so he still had to be purified. Yeah, yeah, lots, lots of purification is yet to happen. Well, why? How is it then? Say you lot have got your place and you're chanting. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, wrong word. Like you know, some people, some devotees also, you have your own place chanting. Why is it different? Why no, is it? Please. Sorry. 
we have our own what? Places where you can uh, like chant and you oh, know. Like Japa, Japa, yeah, yeah, Japa, Japa, right. Yeah. And then, so is it wrong if you, in your own place, you sort of have your own place and you doing your chanting in your own on on your own? Is that wrong, or should you just be being with devotees? Well, the main thing is to chant. Yeah. That's, that's 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 the main thing, and you may be blessed with you. This circumstantially, you may be you you may have the association of devotees. It's great, mm. but circumstantially, you may not. Yeah, but you still chant. Yeah, that's the yeah. principle. If the uh, opportunity is there, yes, great. It's nice too, but then if the, the opportunities not there then you still chant yeah? yeah and you create your own little sacred space which i think you will do in your place where you live you know you create a create a peaceful environment and some mm -hmm. devotees actually find that more easier than chanting in a room with 30 people yeah i can do it yeah. <laughs> so you might find it Myself, yeah. I find it when I was in Mayapur, I was finding it easier to chant where I stayed rather than chanting in a temple room with uh, 1,000, 2,000 people. Yeah. I just found it easier. It's ecstatic. Sometimes it's ecstatic, but sometimes it's distracting. So, yeah. in answer to your question, yeah, circumstances will be different throughout our life, you know, especially if you're not Brahmacharya living in a temple. You're going to be chanting at home. So some, as you know, some devotees have um, japa sanghas, isn't it? I'm sure some of you join these japa sanghas where you can, all oh, your chanting japa. I mean, that's there if that's to your liking. You, you, you can do that. But the main thing is whatever circumstances we are in, whether we're in the association of 2,000 Vaishnavas, 20, or we're on our own in our house, a bed sit somewhere or a house, a detached house. We're chanting Hare Krishna. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's read on a little. Yeah, I was just thinking, Bru, like sometimes you get devotees that you might even be staying at the temple. They're having all the association. They're apparently getting up from Mangalarti, but they still manage to drift away. Yeah, Even we, um, yeah. We, the or do you mean like drift away, like leave the association of devotees? Is that leave what the mean? association of devotees, yeah. Um, yeah, as we practically see. As we practically see. So yeah. I think even if you're on your own and you may be able to... I think it's... If you're sincere, Krishna will help you no matter what your situation is. Yeah, so that's the point. It's a good point, Mother Lavang. If if you are sincere, yeah, yeah, then you will remain in Krishna consciousness. But as we do, I'm sure devotees here, I can see who's joining us today. As when the opportunity comes, then you make the, then you do take the association of the temple and devotees. You know, when mm -hmm. the opportunity arises, you know. But as Mother Lavang is saying, yeah, even. It's seen that even in that situation, it's not, um, you know, it, it, one can still drift away from Krishna consciousness. So sincerity is the key. Yeah, thank you for reminding us of that, or reminding yourselves of that, yes, of, of us of that in, it, in the temple. So generally, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see the temple is where new people are coming in, where new devotees come in. And then they find their space, they find their place. And then they get settled, like you are settled already. You know? Mm. <laughs> they, they live outside and they find their place. But the first coming in is in often it can be into the temple. Sometimes not. Depends. Good. Anyway, let's read on a bit. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We speak about the dual identity. This dual identity, so yeah, dual identity, material and spiritual. 
characteristic of both gopis and sadhakas is explained by Nava Yogendra in the following verse. So I'll just quote the translation. Quote, Devotion, direct experience of the Supreme Lord and detachment from other things, these three occur simultaneously for one who has taken shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the same way that pleasure, nourishment and relief from hunger come simultaneously and increasingly with each bite of a person engaged in eating. Okay, for those who might know of that verse, the first line is Bhakti Prashen Anabhava Vraktiya. Okay, unquote. The degree to which a devotee is accomplished in Ripalamba Seva determines the extent to which the spiritual aspect of his identity becomes prominent and the mundane aspect concealed. All right, because simply put, Ripalamba means that you want it. It means you're actively desiring it. You know, if there's no Ripalamba, it means you're not actively desiring Krishna. But Ripalamba means you're actively wanting Krishna. You know, so that's what he wants, and that's how I can read that, you know. Those, you could say, to the degree to which a devotee is accomplished in wanting Krishna, i.e. Ripalamba, Seva, determines to, to which the spiritual aspect of his identity becomes prominent and the mundane aspect is concealed. This evolution can be seen in the gopis and in a less assertive way in any practitioner. The gopis attain prema. Yeah, those gopis who were stopped and then Krishna appeared in their trance, they attain prema. And the sadhakas attain sadhakas attain ruchi, a shakti, then power. Okay. When by the power of their devotion, gopis and sadhakas alike destroy the grip of the three modes. At that time, they attain a nature like that of the law, and by their prema become qualified associates. Okay, quite a big jump there. So one is free from the grip of the modes and material nature. So one is, I could say, one is liberated. And one aspect of liberation. And by their prema, you heard the liberated. Krishna asserts this principle while explains to Uddhava the workings of the modes of nature. And there's a verse here. I'll just quote the translation. Oh, gentle Uddhava, all these different phases of conditioned life. I have got my watch. Let me check the time. Great. Plenty of time. Um, oh, gentle Uddhava, all these different phases of conditional life arise from work born of the modes of material nature. The living entity who conquers these modes manifest from the mind can dedicate himself to me by the process of devotional service and thus attain pure love for me. Unquote. We have seen that the initial result of the gopis being barred for meeting Krishna was the pain of separation by which its intensity purified their inauspicious qualities. I'm just thinking that. Um, as Mother Chandravali was saying, sometimes we seem to be barred <laughs> from entering yeah. the next of the holy name. Yeah. But that also might be just due, due to our impurity as well. So in other words, to be able to meditate upon the holy name, and if one's fortunate, you know, form, pastimes, etc., you have to be pure-hearted. Otherwise, you cannot get entrance. But even, okay, okay, we, so we have impurities in our heart so if we get to that and we're feeling that and we're feeling separation from krishna and our desire becomes a little bit intense to achieve krishna yeah so that so by that pain just rather the pain of separation by its intensity that that purifies us one gets purified of anything inauspicious yeah so that's why it's so important not to give up. All right, Krishna not manifesting. I've had enough of this. Put my bead bag down. Let me go and let me go and make a cup of coffee. 
let me give up. This is too much. No, we should, you know, we, sh we should not give up. We should be stubborn, you know, keep chanting and keep praying, you know. We should From be this... like, sorry. sorry, should be like um, well, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta when he went to Gokshoba, I want initiation, I want initiation. Same yes. thing, Narasam Das Thakur goes to look, look at Swami, I want initiation, I want initiation. That was quite intense. That if you don't give me initiation, I'm going to drown myself drown in the game. Yeah. And so we have to, like Krishna, if you don't give us um, Krishna Prema, we'll keep going. <laughs> we just after you. Um, why, uh, why is Sheshika? And and he, uh, he, I was listening to a class, and, and I have mentioned this before, um, but it comes to mind again. But he, he, this was in New York, and I was there blessed to be there here and give class and he mentioned chanting is like devotees trying to break something you know you know you ever try to you know everyone's in the cooks here trying to break a coconut bang bang <laughs> so you keep you're chanting you're trying to Hari Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Hari Ram 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 trying to break through inattention trying to break through distraction trying to just be able to hear the sweet holy name. Keep trying, keep trying, like trying to break through. I gave that example, you know. Yeah, so from this, a practicing devotee can conclude that the distress he feels in his conditioned state will destroy his the karma and free him from offenses. Now we shall examine the subsequent result of the Gopi's separation which was the bliss they experience, and how a sadhaka benefits from the pleasure of Ripalamba Baba, of Ripalamba Bhajan. Okay. So, another section. Sukadev Goswami says that the gopis experienced bliss, nirvriti, and the cause of that bliss was Krishna appearing within their trance of meditation, in jhana which means meditation, where they embraced each other. So they embraced within their, the gopis embraced Krishna in their spiritualized, subtle body. Yeah. What the gopis wanted to achieve physically, they secured mentally within their hearts. When their husbands stood by the door with sticks, barring their exit, what did the gopis do? They closed their eyes and in defiance they meditated upon Krishna. Who? Krishna, because he's absolute, so in that meditation he was present. Who is sympathetic to their plight became personally manifest to them. So it wasn't a figment of their imagination. Krishna personally manifest to them. Thus the gopis fulfilled their long-standing desire to embrace Krishna. And the touch of his transcendental limbs filled them with endless bliss. So they felt Krishna embracing them. Yeah, that's what described here. They actually felt it. Krishna embraced them through their meditation. Okay, so Maharaj then, what was the influence of the bliss that they felt? So how did that bliss influence the gopis? Whatever materially auspicious qualities of Mangala that remained within the gopis, okay, whatever materially, material auspicious qualities remained within the gopis were reduced to nil. Thus the pain and joy of separation freed the gopis from temporal effects, pious and impious. So they came to the spiritual platform we should note that the gopis' great delight was a, a consequence of meeting with Krishna and not an outcome of the nectarian effect of separation itself. In the verse spoken by Sukadeva Goswami beginning Tam Eva Paramatmanam, mention is made of Paramatma. Okay, so that's often asked, you know, do devotees meditate on Paramatma? Or so a word was seemed to indicate that the gopis were meditating paramatma so maraj addresses that one should not mistakenly think that this refers to the super soul or any expansion of mahavishnu 
such a conception would run contrary to corresponding devotional conclusions. The gopis had no attraction for the super soul in previous lives or in a current one. Why then would they think of him, whom yogis worship in Shantaras, as their paramour in Chara? The simple meaning is that a tutor is a supreme soul, the supreme personality of Godhead. Therefore, even though the gopis' conduct was debased by material calculation, so debased by material calculation means that young girls shouldn't go to meet young boys in the forest, basically. So even though the gopis' conduct was debased by material calculation, in connection with the Supreme, it yielded the highest spiritual perfection. So what are we to learn from this? Well, it explains. From this example, a sadhaka can rightly conclude that the ecstasy of separation he tastes in meditation results not only in great delight, but in the removal of all auspicious qualities. Right? Removal of all auspicious qualities means the mode of goodness. Yes, yeah? so this is Sudha Sattva. And I think here this is where now the example now the moon is pulled up. In this way, the consequences of invoking moods of separation is that a devotee's karmic bonds are nullified. However, something more must be said about this statement. A devotee is completely free of bad habits resulting from past karma at the stage. And I'm going to say, what stage is that? One is free of bad habits. Anasanivriti. Go up a bit. Go up a bit. Nishta. Nishta, yeah. Nishta, yeah. So one is, yeah, free of bad habits, that's Nishta. And at the Shakti, these habits are absolutely vanquished without the trace. So there's still some shadow. Okay, you may have stopped doing something you shouldn't be doing. But sometimes the shadow or the remembrance of that thing is still there within your psyche. Yeah. But because you're nishta, then you do not fall prey to it, even when it dances within your mind. Yeah. Can yes. I explain yeah. say that in my understanding? Like yeah, what please. I sometimes feel like, say, um, some issues come up because of conditioning. I say, well, I say this and I'll do this. Then the intelligence kicks in and it says, no, you won't say anything, you won't do anything. Leave it to Krishna. Yeah, that's called anatta nivritti. And that's called yeah. nishta. That means where you means you identify something that not that's Special. not favorable. A yes. favorable mood or an unfavorable disposition. And and you identify it and you don't act according to it. You 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 act according to how Krishna wants you to act, you could say. So that's called anatta nivriti. So that's one of the stages of anatta nivriti is that you identify the anatas and you choose not to act according to your lower nature. Yeah. That mm -hmm. means you're becoming the anatas, becoming nivriti. They're going, they're coming and you're continuing with your devotional resolve and they're going. Yeah, he could say. It's a very good description. Thank you. Of <clears throat> so, therefore, when we say karmic bonds, it cannot mean ordinary karma. But in Sanatana Goswami's sub, <laughs> sub, subconscious habits, someone said something. We have cited the example of Narada Muni, who in his last life, had achieved prema. Okay. But he was disqualified from the law's association because he had a trace of attachment to meditating in solitary places. In a way that Narada did not know that this was unfavorable to his devotions. So he wasn't aware. It's a subconscious thing. It's subtle. Yeah. So subconsciously it was there. 
in a way that now they did not know that this was unfavorable to his devotions, the gopis also did not know that adhering to family obligations and social traditions of Raj should be renounced for Prema Bhakti. Okay. So that was the um, material impurity that stopped them from going to meet Krishna. Yeah, they still had adherence to family obligations and social traditions. That's why the obstacles were then put in front of them. Not having fully purified themselves in a previous life, some vestiges of subtle reaction accompanied them as they took gopis' bodies imbued with a shakti or bhava. Right, so they're coming from the practice in the previous life, so they've attained to a high level of perfection, never entered into Krishna's pastimes, but they cannot go and be with Krishna. There's still some impurities. Still some impurities. It's in Bhama, Vandavan, I guess. Yeah. So, as they took gopi bodies imbued with a shakti or bhava, those reactions then manifest in a form of attachment to, to social customs. Similarly, as a practitioner, so how does that relate to us? Similar as a practitioner transitions through the five stages of smarandas, right? five stages of smarandas is smarana, dharana, dhyana, anushmiti, and samadhi. Yeah, we discussed that. Yeah, so smarana means recollection, dharana means able to observe. Some absorption, going deeper in meditation. Some absorption is there, then I've got to hear dhyana, meditation, then constant anusmriti, and then trance. Yeah. So similarly, as a practitioner transitions through the five stages of smarandas, he is freed of both gross and subtle reactions, provided that unlike the sadhaka who becomes the gopis, he expertly Applies the principles of Sadhana Bhakti. Okay, any questions? Okay. Someone may argue, then Mark brings up a hypothetical argument here. The gopis' perfection ended with the demise of their body, as expressed in the words Jaho Gona Mayam Deham. Right. I think I've mentioned that before. We read you can read that. It says Jana Guna Mayam Deham that the gopis died, that they left their bodies. Any anyone heard that before? You might feel it when they go someone is read like that. But it's not exactly what happened. So here's Marge explains. The idea that death would occur as a result of Ripalumba would be a most inauspicious intrusion into Krishna's most auspicious Raslila. Yeah, how can Krishna enjoy Raslila when a few thousand gopis have just died? <laughs> in separation. So one could just imagine the chaos and sorrow that the similar things the death of hundreds or thousands of housewives would would cause. So Maji is referring to that verse which it says that they died in some translations said that the gopis uh they left their bodies but it's, they left their material bodies is what actually happened while death is indeed the tenth aspect of ripalumba right it is really manifest and when it, it when it is only on occasions that are favorable for the lord's pastime a time when pathos is meant to dominate However, on the full moon night of Kartik, abundant sweetness was dominant. So neither the gopis nor Yoga Maya would arrange an event that could result in conflict of mellows, rasabas. Yeah, so ten of one hundreds of gopis dying. How then should the words of the sage Sukadev be understood? Because his words explain they died. That's the words Sukadev used. So Maharaj explains, commentators are unified in the notion that when the gopis were purified of pious and impious influences, 
they cast off thinking that they were not favorable to Krishna's pleasure. Their conduct was reminiscent of the way that Brahma once relinquished one unfavorable mental body after the other. Everyone still with us here? Yeah. Still mm -hmm. okay. yes. In a similar way, the material aspect of their being e evaporated and they attained fully spiritual bodies fit for Krishna's company. This understanding is confirmed by Krishna himself in the message that he sent to the gopis through Uddhava. Krishna has sent his cousin to console the Vajrasis. To each relative and dear acquaintance, he dedicated individual letters, which include included separate messages to each group of gopis. To those gopis who were obstructed from meeting him, he, he wrote, quote, Although some gopis had to remain in the cowherd village and so could not join the Rastans to sport with me at night in the forest, they were nonetheless fortunate. Indeed, they attained me by thinking of my potent pastimes. Yeah. Unquote. Sukadev Goswami then says that the gopis referred to in this message were thrilled to receive Krishna's recognition to have been reminded of pastimes with Krishna. On this historical narration, it is clear that the gopis were not deceased, but very much alive. Moreover, the word kalyanya, fortunate, implies that everything remained auspicious that night. So the gopis were of a mind to give up their bodies in the way sati once did. They restrained themselves. They were aware that such an act would have displeased Krishna. Thus we answer by quoting a Charya Vishnu summary on this topic. Quote, Thus the conclusion is that they gave up their material bodies without dying. Parched by the intense heat of separation, their material bodies gave up their material, their materially, let's read that again. Parched by the intense heat of separation, the material bodies gave up the, ma the materiality and became purely spiritual, just like the bodies of great devotees such as Dhruva Maharaj. This is the meaning of the gopis giving up their bodies. All right, so I can answer that if you're, if you're there in a class and any reading, you happen to read that the gopis gave up their bodies, then someone raises their hand. Oh, so you mean the gopis died? Then you can give a nice explanation. They right. gave up their material bodies. Yeah. Because why? With material, tint of material desires, everything went. Yeah, yeah. It would be inauspicious to the pastimes of Krishna all of a sudden. <laughs> so, but Marge mentioned that it is a fact there's different stages of ripper lumber, and there is a stage where one actually dies. Yeah. Is anyone can risk in that? There's, um, I can think of one example of that. It was someone died feeling great separation. The ultimate, one of the aspects of Ripper Lumber. Let's see if you can get it. Mm -hmm. I can give you a clue if you want, anyone. Give us a clue. It's not Krishna's pastimes. It's a Mahaprabhu's pastime. No. Um, what was that Chitra Ketu? Chitra Ketu? No, that, that the son, son died. No, he didn't, didn't give up his no, body. No, 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 not thinking Chitra that. Chitra Ketu didn't give up his body. No, no. It's no, not. no, not Chitra Ketu. I mean, you know that little boy died and the... Yeah, I mean, there is cases that. like that, even in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes, but it's not the example which I'm thinking of, and it doesn't quite fit as well. But mm. there's an example where the, where someone's feeling so much separation. Was it, um, well, to me, I can think of like uh, Chota Hari, Hari Das, but that was because... You could do, you could give that example. Yeah, yeah that, because uh, that he was be. rejected, so he... Chota Hari Das. Yeah, so Chota Hari Das. Although, although he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. He gave up his body. A bit different. 
the example I'm thinking of that this person didn't commit suicide, the pain was so intense that 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 he left the that he left his body. It's so intense feeling separation from it's it when took... Krishna left. Is that when Krishna left Vrindavan? No. <laughs> we're no. Discussing no, that that I mean Uda was feeling separation, but he went mm. he had to go to Badrikatram. Yeah. Is it Bill Amangala Prabhu? Who? No. no, 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 he didn't okay. die. He can give us he the died answer. Eventually. If I say the incarnation, Lord Ram, Ram's father, oh, Dasarat. 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 yeah, Dasarat uh, did. Yes, he, he actually died of separation. Yes, he died, he couldn't maintain. Well, his then we can give another example Lord Nityananda's father. Also, yeah, Nishinanda's father had I, I had, had I, I he also yeah, died in separation from his nita, from his um, yeah, nita, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there you are, there are, there are some examples, but as Marge mentions, it fits into the pastime, the pathos of the Leela. But that, I mean, it wouldn't work in this past, it wouldn't work in Krishna's calling the gopis, it would uh. It would be Rasabas. But in the past times of Lord Ram, it kind of it kind of added to the Rasa. That it added to the Rasa. Dasara actually leaving his body. It kind of helped to build up, helps to build up the whole drama of the Ramayan. But it wasn't um yeah, they wouldn't be favorable in this in Krishna's Leela. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyone heard the story? I don't know if it's true. I'm going off the sidetrack a bit here. Let's see how much time we have. Uh, anyone heard? I heard the story. Someone told a story where there was one um, well-known actor. Anyone heard this story in India? You know, a couple of hundred years ago or so, a hundred years ago. And he was playing Lord Nishingadev. And he got so carried away in the mood of Nishinga Dave, he actually killed the person who was playing Hirani Kashipu by disemboweling him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and then, uh, as I've heard, um, whether it's true or not, but anyways, let's just take it. Then it holds. Then, then the next, then, you know, what to do? Do one, does, does one prosecute him for murder? There's a whole controversy of what, what is, how, you know, is he guilty of murder or not? And in the end, it was, you know, India being what it is, you know, they know he was in this barber. So therefore, it's not like he shouldn't be held accountable for murder. So then a few years later, he played the part of, um, he played in the Ramayan. And he played the part of Dasaraf. And he actually died <laughs> in separation. Oof. Anyway, take that as you may. Quite well, good actor then, yeah? <laughs> Definitely a good actor. So good he died. <laughs> or he could be so much in, a, in devotion. Yeah, it could be many things. I mean, he, you know, you could, yeah. Yeah. All right. Um. Sorry, but going off the track a bit there. Let's see. We've got what's the time? Four minutes. Four precious minutes for Krishna Guitar. Let's let's continue with those four precious minutes. <clears throat> the final aspect of this pastime of Ripalamba and how a sadhaka is benefited by cultivating that same spirit will now be disclosed. Okay, it is this. Those who hear and read about pastimes. Of Ripalamba are especially blessed. Okay, that's how to develop it. You hear about it, it will help you to develop it. In their commentaries, both Krishna Chagwati Thakur and Baladev Vijabhushan emphasize the Tatbhav effect of hearing about the ecstasy of the gopis of separation. You know, this Tatbhav effect, if you watch a film that is a drama and it has a sad ending, then you start crying. You know, you may do. 
this tad bhava, you share the emotions. So when you hear about the pastimes of the gopis, the pastimes of separation from Krishna, this tad bhava, yeah, it has an effect on you. Yeah. Um, they emphasize the tad bhava effect of hearing about the ecstasy of the gopis' separation. By hearing of these pastimes, a similar effect is bestowed upon the hearer. Indeed, I think, yeah, something. Um, how to develop these feelings of separation? Okay, well, here's well, how to develop. So you should hear about it. It'll help. Indeed, the same benefit assures from hearing from many other pastimes of separation that our charis have narrated. We quote again Pallad Maharaj's explanation of the mechanism of Tatbhava upon a sadhaka absorbed in devotional service, as explained to his classmates. So it's a verse from Pallad Maharaj, quote, The devotee is then freed from all material contamination because he constantly thinks of the Lord's pastimes. And because his mind and body have been converted to spiritual qualities, because of his intense devotional service, his ignorance, material consciousness, and all kinds of material desires are completely burnt to ashes. This is the stage at which one can achieve the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet. Okay, so the word tatbhava is in this verse. Constantly thinks hears and thinks about the Lord's pastimes. Unquote. One minute left. Great. We can go further. We can go another 10, 15 minutes. The <laughs> <laughs> did, did, did line tat bhava bhavano pritya sakriti indicates that by the nature of a sadhaka's contemplation, Bhava transforms. So Bhava means not you've achieved the level of Bhava, but Bhava also means, it has another many meanings. Bhava means the mood. So you share that mood. Indicates the nature of a sadhaka's, as of a sadhaka's contemplation, otherwise known as Bhava, transforms his body and mind, ashraya akriti, in harmony with the topic in which he is absorbed, Tat Bhava. Since that topic is very much in relationship to Krishna, Bhava also indicates the mood of devotion which a practitioner aspires for, friend, parent, or lover. Okay. Um, I'll just read this paragraph here. Last bit. A devotee may be concerned that his body is still very much immersed in the modes of nature. However, if he regularly, if he is regularly absorbed in spiritual practice, then both material intelligence and the impressions of past sense objects, anushayaha, are burned up. Chakravati Thakur says that eventually the Raghunuga Sadaka meets Krishna in the relationship that he contemplated. We spoke about that before as well. Yeah. This was the case of the gopis and will be for those who follow their example for the process of oral reception. Okay. Hari Om up. Okay, let's stop there. Hare Krishna. Oh, this was interesting. So nice to hear these things. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone. And um, tomorrow we're going to have, we're going to, have a go at starting Bhagavad Gita again on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Yeah. So, so we're just on Wednesdays, so we're going to have Bhagavad Gita tomorrow. So please join us for that. We'll send you the new link. Yeah, I'll create a new link. And then this link you got today, you can use this link for the next 20 weeks. Okay, I'll put 20 yeah. things up yeah. there. So you can use the same link. Yeah. Because right. it's cleaning. Otherwise, I have to keep writing the classes at 6 o'clock classes. It's 6 o'clock. Somebody yeah. might try to join it up as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.